Good morning. You don't know how badly I want to say welcome to worship at the park. But uh, that's not happening. Thanks for, for flexing and coming in here this morning. I made this call uh, yesterday when I saw they were calling for the possibility of rain in the morning, and I am a risk aversion person. I like everything to flow well, and so, and then when I got up this morning, I thought, oh Lord, isn't there rain coming? And uh, so I thought, oh, I'll just look like a little bit of a goof. But then somebody told me when they came in, it was raining a little bit, it was sprinkling, so I was praising the Lord for the water. <laughs> so welcome to worship this morning. Uh, and of course, the, the little note at the very bottom of the service uh, please make your way over to the pavilion. We're going to make our way over to the Family Life Center and have our picnic there. So glad that you are here. The Lord is with us always and certainly with, with us this morning whenever we gather in his name to worship him. I'd ask you to look at the announcements that are printed in the bulletin and read them for yourself. Um, and uh, we'll be... We'll all be good. Uh, so let's prepare ourselves uh, uh, for worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let's prepare ourselves for worship with a prelude. morning. Would you all rise and sing along with us to worship?
worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're all Redeemed by His grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house. There is joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. Oh yeah, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house. There is joy. There is joy. Joy in this place, and we won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. Surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. Oh, oh. I'm calling on the God of Jacob Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses I need you now to do the same thing for me Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now How I need you now Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages 
ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the Lord. With you all things are possible I'm calling on the God of David Who made a shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath But I've got my own giants Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now, how I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. Oh God, my God, I need you, oh God, my God, I need you.
gift it is to be able to call on the God of David, of Jacob, who healed, who heals now, who gives power then and power now, and that we have his blessing here today and every day. Oh!
thank you and praise you that you have called us together today as one big church that we can see the extent of this church family. Father, sometimes we come to church empty and just totally done in from the week before. That's why you call us here on Sunday mornings to be refilled, to be renewed, to be nourished. And so, Father, we just ask that you will fill us up and that you will provide what we need in this week ahead. It's a big week for a lot of us. And so, Father, we are just leaning on you, knowing that you will go with us. You will provide comfort and peace. You will provide healing and strength and wisdom and understanding for the times we need it. So, Father, we just again say thank you that we are here waiting to be filled up by you. In Christ's holy, holy name, amen. The Lord is here, and we are here, and wherever the Lord is present, he brings his peace. So the peace of Christ be with you. Let's share that peace with one another this morning. Okay, good morning, everyone. Right now um, is time for our children's moment. And since it's been almost two and a half years since we've had an actual children's moment, I'm going to refresh your memory. The children's moment is when the children come forward and join me up here. And they're always so excited to do it. But listen, so children, what, what is children? So if you have a baby, we invite you to bring your baby uh, to sit at the foot of Jesus. If you are um, a preschooler, we want to hear what you have to say. And the same way up and up. And if you are a youth, um, you are always welcome to come up and model to the younger kids how they should behave when they are up here. So, I'm so excited because I see so many kids and youth out there, so somebody better come on. Like, come on. Nathan wouldn't come. You all could come. Come, my children, come. Oh, I should have told you to go ahead and bring your backpacks because you were going to have to come up anyway. Okay, that's good. That's fine. That's fine. And Nathan is coming up. Wow, Papa! <laughs> yeah, good job. Okay. All right, so it doesn't have to be so formal as this. We can sit down. You don't have to worry about it. So, since you guys didn't bring your book bags, I guess we're going to have to take a look at, uh, a look at my... <laughs> What do I have in my book bag? What do you think? You think pencils? Well, I've got dog bones. I've got glasses. I've got tissues and a poppet. But I think my favorite thing that I have in here is brand new school supplies. How many of you love to get brand new school supplies. Fresh pens and paper, raise your hand high. Like you just love to get new pens and how many of you smell the paper when you open it? Okay, I used to think I was a weirdo, but TikTok has shown me differently. So I am not alone and neither are you. Okay, 
Well, let's see. Liam, could you help me? Because you've got something in your hand that would help me out a lot. What's this? Okay, so everybody, we have a blank, brand new blank piece of paper. Okay, now, this is kind of like us when we are born, but then we sin, we're born into sin, and it gets, it makes us yucky and dirty. Yes, I want you to do it, honey. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. So Liam is showing us what sin does, like it, it, it dirties us up, and it makes us Thank you. No, you could keep going. Okay. Do this real quick. So, it, what it really does is it separates us. It separates us from God. <laughs> so, here's another brand new um, school supply I have. It's a brand new one of those mega pink erasers. Look how brand new. Just brand new. That just is, is beautiful. Oh, it makes me want to go back to school so I can use it. But I'm going to use it on our paper here. Sorry, I forgot. Does that mean, does that, I'm out of practice. It's been a while. Does that mean that you can go around being a big bad bully? No, no. Because when you have Jesus in your heart, you're going to have the love of God in your heart. And that is going to allow you to shine Christ's light. Now, we're going to move into our backpack blessing. So if you did want to run and get your backpack, you can do that. I encourage you to because um, you brought them. <laughs> so you should go get them and bring them. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Go. It's fine. We've got all day. So it is a back-to-school blessing, and the kids brought their backpacks, which is awesome, but you don't need a backpack to get this blessing. Um, it's not the backpack that is being blessed. It is you that is being blessed. And anyone, if you're a teacher, parents, if you have any involvement in school this year at all, we invite you to be prayed for, too. It, this is not just for children. Um, so if you have a backpack, great. But if you don't, you are still blessed, OK? Um, and I have backpack tags, but they're a little bit different because you can put them on anything. It doesn't have to be a backpack. It can even be on you because you're the one being blessed. All right. Yes, wow, wow. <laughs> All right. Um, Pastor Steve is going to do the, the blessing. Well, this is really a special moment for us um, because um, I believe that blessings are from God. It's not me blessing you. It's God blessing you. And we already sang a song about blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his face up upon you and give you peace. That's an early blessing. So let's do our own blessing for you 
and the teachers and mom and dad and anybody else is going to be supporting what happens at your school this year. So let's, let's think about God, turn our eyes towards God. Lord God, I pray that you would bless each one of these children represented here this morning at the front of the sanctuary and any of those that are sitting back with mom and dad. I pray, Lord, you would see and bless each teacher that's present in this room this morning, each parent who's going to be praying for their child or children during this school year. We pray, Father, for the administrators, the principals, and the other teachers at their schools when the school begins. We ask for you to see them and bless them. And Lord, we pray for a couple of things. We ask you to do, uh, give them blessings in a couple of areas. We ask you, Lord, first to give them the blessing of health, keep them healthy throughout the year. Lord, we ask you to give them the blessing of engagement, that they'd be interested in what's happening in school and so that they want to pay attention. We pray, Lord, you to help give them a blessing of learning new things that they haven't known. And Lord, as they learn it, to let it seep deep into their mind and in their heart. And Lord, we pray that you give them the blessing of friendship while they're at school, that they'll develop good friends this year, people that can support them and that they can support. And we pray, Lord, you'd bless them with peace. We pray, Lord, you'd keep conflict out of their schools. Uh, we pray, Lord, that there wouldn't be a bullying. We pray that people would be understanding of one another. And, Lord, we pray for the blessing of safety while they're at school, that no harm will come to any child or teacher or worker in the school this year. And we pray, Lord, finally for the blessing of walking with you. Lord, we pray that throughout this school year, that as they go to school and as they are at school and as they come home from school and while they're home, they'll be very much aware that you are with them, that they're never away from you this whole school year. You never leave them or go anywhere else but with them. And we just give you thanks, Lord. We give you praise for how good you are and ask this blessing on these children, their teachers, their parents, and anybody else involved in the schools. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. It's uh, it's not in the it's not in the bulletin, but we're taking an offering. Um, so I'd ask the uh, those that are coming to take the offering if you come forward at this time. And we're going to do it a little differently this morning. We're not going to do a doxology. I'm going to say the prayer before we take the offering, and then we'll just leave it at the back. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to not only experience your blessing in our life as we worship, but also, Lord, to bless in return, to bless you with our praise, um, our love, uh, our uh, faithfulness. Lord, what you might want most from us is us. 
But Lord, we also know that there's other ways that we can bless. We can bless the work that you do through this church. You can bless the work that's done in other places around the world through the giving of this church. And so, Lord, as we give you our tithes and our offerings this morning, as we place them in the plate, make us mindful of all the ways that you have provided for our daily needs and how we're dependent upon you. And, Lord, use our tithes, our gifts, our offerings to bless others with the good news of Jesus or with food or help or whatever it is that you will steward these gifts toward. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. For, oh, sorry, uh, for the special music today, I'm doing a song that's based off of Exodus 15, which is the song of Moses. Um, and just the, I don't know, the, the tone of the song always makes me think of whenever the dust clears after a battle in a movie and people are just celebrating the victory. Um, but yeah, this one's about ours. Oh, the Lord, a strength and song, highest praise to Him belongs. Christ the Lord, our conquering King, Your name we raise, Your triumph sing. Oh, praise the Lord, our mighty warrior. one by his hand we stand in victory by his name we've overcome though the storms of hell pursue in darkest night we worship you Cause you divide the raging seas From death to life you safely lead Oh praise the Lord our mighty warrior Praise the Lord the glorious one By his His name we've overcome. Sing praise the Lord, a mighty warrior. Praise the Lord, the glorious one. By His hand we stand in victory. By His name we've overcome. All the saints and angels bow, host of heaven crying out, singing glory, glory to the King. You reign for all eternity. Singing praise the By His hand we stand in victory, by His name we've overcome, by His name we've overcome. Uh, this morning, uh, as uh, Leslie comes forward to share our Bicentennial Spotlight, 
Um, we're going to be hearing the testimony from Bob Thomas's life. Uh, when I interviewed Bob, he had to do a little explaining for me because he talked a lot of baseball terminology and I didn't know some of it. Um, so he had to explain eligibility requirements and uh, the structure of the major leagues because he's telling me that he played for the Baltimore Orioles ball club, but that he played in Georgia. And I had to stop him right there. Okay, what are you talking about? Um, <clears throat> But Bob is also a teacher, and so he patiently walked me through that. And by the time we were done, I understood. And so Bob is also one of our many people here that worked in the public schools. And not only in the public schools, but he taught here. So he has taught in classes in our church for the junior department, for the youth, for the men's Bible class, and then most recently for Out of Bower. Um, but as I listened to his story, what stood out the most to me was this idea that God writes a beautiful story in our life, and sometimes our plans are not God's plans. There might be all these twists and turns, and it's not until we look back in hindsight that we can see how beautiful they are. So Bob played Major League Baseball for one year, and then he said he realized that was <clears throat> excuse me, not his, not going to be for him. And so then he went to Penn State to become a physical education teacher. And it was not long after he got there that he was recognized for his skills. He was not allowed to play baseball because of those rules that I don't exactly understand. But he then became a coach of the freshman team. And he had to explain this quote he said to me that first year that he was playing Major League Baseball, he said, I'm coming home, Mom, I can't hit the curveball. And then he explained to me that's what the guys would say when they realized they just were not going to quite cut it in Major League Baseball. And here's what I think. I think if he had been able, this is going to make me cry, to hit the curveball, he would have missed out on what he was made to do, which was coaching. And his statistics can prove that, you can read about those, but I think more it's the story of his uh, player, Jared Shelley, and how they still have a relationship, and it's Jared and his dad that take Bob hunting every year. You had to have had such an influence on his life for him to continue to do that. And so I thank you for this reminder that God writes a beautiful story, like the one song that was sung, God is for us, but he is also for everyone. And so he uses us in the way he made us to do things for the world that are good. And so we thank you for your story. And Bob, thanks for sharing your gift with this church over the years, your gift of teaching and the influence that you've had on children, youth, and adults. It's a, it's a blessing. Bob's, one of Bob's favorite hymns is Spirit Song, and so we're going to sing that hymn now.
So remain seated, but our, our scripture lesson this morning is, uh, again, as we continue through this series, The Lord's Prayer. Uh, so uh, we're going to be looking at one at verse 11, but let's join together in praying this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So the verse that we're going to look at uh, this morning in this series is verse 11, which is, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. It's kind of interesting that in a, a, a prayer that is uh, pretty much filled with large themes, uh, spiritual themes, that there's this very ordinary request. This is the first really re personal request that's in the Lord's Prayer. Um, <clears throat> so where we come to that part of the uh, uh, prayer where it is, which is personal. Give us this day our daily bread. So what is, what's the thought about why Jesus would want us to pray this part of the prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. I think it's, it's more than what we see on the, on the face of it. It certainly is that. It certainly is a request that God provide us. And when it says here, bread, bread is uh, used for food in general. So it's not just, uh, you know, gluten stuff. It's stuff, everything, the whole range of what it is that nourishes us and strengthens our body physically. <clears throat> but there are three things, I think, that, um, that if we think about the request, that the Lord would want us to be aware of. And the first thing is that we become aware of our dependence on God, that we be dependent upon God. We do depend on God for everything. Uh, we depend on God for big things to little things. Uh, and by focusing on daily bread, Jesus wants us to realize that it's everything that he provides. He uses a basic thing to, uh, for us to ask for because we might be tempted uh, to think that that just comes, that we take it for granted, that it's just a kind of a tag on. But it's something given to us by God. It's something that while we take it for granted, perhaps we shouldn't because it ultimately does come uh, from God. And so maybe what we would say is do we have a daily awareness of our dependence on God? Because it's, it's easy not to think about it. It's easy not to, be, to, to become unaware of the fact that every day uh, we are depending upon God for everything, um, to take it for granted. That's why it can be a really important thing in the life of anyone to develop the spiritual practice of saying grace at a meal. You know, I when I was growing up, we always had a prayer before we ate. We always thanked God uh, uh, for for the food that we ate. I heard some old time preacher say that he he would pray at a restaurant, and one time this guy said to him. Uh, oh, I don't bother to say a prayer before I eat. And the preacher said, yeah, neither does my dog. But the dog's not aware. But we are aware that God has given us what it is that we are sitting down to, to eat, whether it's, a, whether it's just a cup of milk or whether it's a full meal. It's something uh, which we can take the opportunity of receiving to be aware of God's gifting that to us, our dependence upon him. We can use that moment to, to acknowledge our dependence on God. And we can use that moment to teach our children 
about the importance of depending on God. If we skip the grace, we skip the opportunity to acknowledge our dependence. And so <clears throat> mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, anybody else working with kids, here's an opportunity that can last them their lifetime if you begin to cultivate that same grace uh, thanking God, acknowledging dependence upon him every time you have a meal. Uh, the word daily that Jesus uses here to talk about this bread, give us this day our daily bread, um, is interesting because it might <coughs> cause us to hearken back in our memory to manna. If you know the story uh, of Moses, you know, uh, Caleb sang the song of Moses, uh, Moses was used by God uh, when the Israelites left Egypt and started their journey after they you know, were out in the desert wandering um, for 40 years because of their unbelief uh, following an incident where they had a challenge, um, that God still provided daily bread. It was called manna. And that manna in the wilderness came every day. And part of the purpose of manna was not only to sustain the Israelites, but also to teach them that they were dependent upon God and to trust him, which they did not do when they were faced with their challenge, to trust him that he would lead them. But he provided for them daily. And the word daily is important because manna doesn't keep. You can't put manna in the refrigerator and go to it the next morning and make a nice big plate of manna cotti. It'll be no good. It will spoil. So every day, and, they, and of course we know that because somebody tried it. Um, so every day they had to go out and gather up this manna, which was their daily bread. God was super gracious because when they complained about the manna, he gave them quail. But, you know, that's how God is. He, he's so gracious. But they were dependent on God every day for the food that they ate. And that's the lesson they learned. And that's what we need to learn, that we are dependent on God for everything that we have. And the second thing that this little portion of the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, has the potential to teach us is that we need to uh, develop gratitude, that we need to cultivate a spirit of gratitude in our life for the things, for everything that God has given us, that even the most basic things we need to develop gratitude for that. So it's one thing to know, okay, I'm dependent upon God for everything. It's a, what you, that's not enough. You have to go a little further and say thank you. you know, to say thank you for those, those things that God gives us. Um, in our family, uh, my wife has taught our kids the importance of saying thank you. And, and, and thank you cards are uh, like a daily uh, part of the Christmas season. Uh, to say to write a card to say thank you because gratitude matters and gratitude to God matters the basic disposition of our whole attitude and thought our heart and our mind should be to be grateful for big things and basic things we need to be grateful for everything large and small Ephesians 5:20 says that we are to be quote giving thanks always and for everything to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're supposed to do. Constantly be in an attitude of thanking, of expressing gratitude, always for everything to God. And if we don't, then we have to stop and say, why, why, you know, why am I failing there? Why am I not remembering to to take time to thank God. Psalm 103 would be a good psalm to read on a regular basis, maybe every day, especially the first five verses, but the whole psalm. Psalm 103 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise the holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives your sins and heals your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And you can go on, I won't read all of it. But that's a good psalm to, to memorize, uh, 
to just remind you of your need, not only to recognize that you're dependent upon God, but also to say thank you to God for all these things. And in, in, in teaching children to say grace, as I mentioned earlier, it might be good before everybody bows their head for someone to say, all of this is from God. So let's thank him for this. So they get that it's not just a rote, memorized little recitation, but that you're talking to the one who provided the meal and everything else. And then maybe the last thing that the Lord is wanting us to recognize in this part of the prayer, give us this day our daily bread, is that bread alone doesn't satisfy us. Bread alone will not satisfy our needs. Remember the manna. It says in, talks about that in Deuteronomy 8.3. He humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives, and woman, and every person, People live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. That's interesting. That the manna itself was to teach them that they were not to live by the manna that they got every day. That that wasn't enough to sustain them. That was not going to be enough to satisfy them in their life. What they needed was the every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord of the Lord. What does God say to me today? What is God's will for me today? What is God asking me to do today? And we go to his word. And that sustains us. The experience of the wandering Israelites was that manna is good, but it's not, it's, it's not enough. I told you, you couldn't store it. It, um, it feeds every day, that day, or nothing. Uh, don't depend on the manna. You know, don't, don't look to the manna, but look to the manna giver. We don't look to the manna, we don't look to the bread, we don't focus on that, we look to the giver. Uh, our desire should be for the giver more than the gift, whatever it is. Uh, we need the word, the message, the guidance the hope, the power that the giver speaks more than anything else. When Satan tried to tempt Jesus with bread, Jesus quoted Deuteronomy 8.3. Quoted it right back to him. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And I think Jesus wants us to pray for daily bread, but also to know as we pray that it's not enough. In the gospel stories, we read in the gospel of John, but it's in all the other gospels, about Jesus feeding the 5,000. In the story of John's gospel, it's the two fish and the five loaves. Um, and um, after that miracle happened where he fed 5,000 men plus women and children, uh, it says the next day that people went looking for Jesus. Um, and when they found him, he said to them, you know, that they weren't looking for him, not they were looking for him not because they recognized but the things that he did, who he was, but because they had had their fill of bread. That's why they were coming. They were looking for the gift, really, more than the giver. And he says, don't work for food that perishes, but for food that endures to eternal life. And so, of course, naturally, they would, well, you know, what's that mean? They, so they ask him, uh, what work did they have to do? Um, what ha work did they need to do to get that food? And Jesus says in verse 29, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Well, that doesn't sound like much work to believe, but that's God's work. Remember, you can't earn your salvation. You can't work enough to get anything from God. God graces us with what he gives us. And so the group persists and um, they, they actually were smart enough to reference to, to Moses. Moses gave us manna. And Jesus reminds them that God gave manna, not Moses. And uh, then manna was given 
them uh, that the manna that they were given or they needed was manna that came from heaven as God sent his son to give life to the world. That there was a bread that was God was giving from heaven that would not just sustain for a day, but give life to every person on the face of the earth. And they ask it, they ask Jesus, give us that bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall not thirst. So when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we pray remembering it's not enough. It will not ultimately satisfy us. We need God's word, and we need Jesus. We need to come to Jesus. We need to believe in him before we will know anything about being satisfied the way that God wants to fill us. Psalm 73, verse 25 says this, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there's nothing on earth that I desire beside you. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord, not because we're depending on bread, we're depending on you. Not because we think that uh, bread is the greatest thing or that it came to us on its own. We're grateful to you for it. And not because we think that ultimately it will satisfy us, Lord. Because we know, Lord, that you are what satisfies us. God would ask, Jesus would ask us as we pray this on repeatedly that we learn about depending on God for everything every time we say give us our daily bread that the God would that we would be grateful every time we say give us this day our daily bread it'd be a true expression of thanks and that we would recognize that the daily bread we need more than anything the only bread that satisfies is Jesus himself so I ask you this morning who are you depending on what are you grateful for? Where are you finding your satisfaction? Depend on God for what you need. Be grateful for everything you're given. And be satisfied by having Christ in your heart. Lord, help us this day to really recognize how dependent we are upon you Lord, help us this day to be developing an attitude of gratitude in our life for everything that we have. And Lord, help us not to look for satisfaction and stuff that never will satisfy us, but help us to remember that Jesus is the bread of life that satisfies and that we need to come to him. In whose name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Uh, as we sing our closing song, I'll hail the power of Jesus' name, if you're able.
Amen? He is Lord of all. And we uh, get to be part of a sacred throng that worships at his feet. We look forward to that day when we join the host of heaven and all those saints who've gone before us to join that everlasting song and to crown him what he really is. He is Lord of all. Uh, and, and one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, the one who sustains us, the one who provides our daily bread, the one who teaches us to be completely dependent, eternally grateful, and always satisfied with Christ alone. Before I give you the final blessing, I just want to remind you to make your way down to the Family Life Center. Uh, everything's set up and prepared for you there, and we'll, we'll have games and stuff afterwards, so please don't run away. Stick around and be part of the fellowship. And so uh, I'll share the, the blessing that we sang earlier and that I reminded the children of. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>